Well, hello, Revive family and anyone tuning in for our weekly online service. So glad you guys are here and that we can connect together in this way. Uh, we're in the middle of a series called Flourish and we really believe in God that uh, we can flourish on purpose together. And so wherever you're watching this from, our prayer for you is that you would indeed flourish in this year and that you would find God, find life and find community. And so I want to welcome you to that. If this is your first time and you want to let us know, why don't you go out to our website, uh, revivechurch.co.za, and on that front page there, there's a place for where you can contact us or let us know if there's a prayer request that you might have. As a church family together, what we've got coming up in the life of our church is we've got Pathway Courses, and Pathway Courses is the discipleship process of our church. It's really to help understand key things around following Jesus and how we can do that together and then with the steps that we can take together. And so at the moment, we've only got it in person, So, but if you want to register for that, you can go along to our website uh, and you can register through there, or you can send us an email and we will register you. So it's going to be on the 11th and the 18th of February after our in-person church services. And hey, we would love to connect you into a community group. You know, at our church, we don't just want to bring great sermons or great content. But we also want to bring connection. We want to establish people in community, form community. It's the best way for us to grow. And so if you want to find a great revived community, we would love to connect you to one. And you can find that through our website as well. Just go to our groups tab and we can connect you. Also want to just help you take a next step in generosity. You know, in our church, we believe the Bible when it talks about generosity, that as if we re if we sow then we will also reap generously. And in 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 9, verses uh, 6 to 7, Paul's encouraging the churches to be generous. And he says, if you sow generously, you'll also reap generously. But I love how he goes on to say, don't do it out of reluctance, like, oh man, I really don't want to do it. Or, and, or don't do it under compulsion or pressure. Do it because you have decided in your heart that you're going to give. And then just imagine the compounding effect of a generous life that I do it not because I'm being pressured or I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway, but actually doing it out of a willing and, willing and generous spirit, a cheerful heart, and then just seeing that stack up. Imagine the reaping that could take place in that kind of scenario. And we want that for everybody. And so thank you so much for your generous, generosity. If you want to go ahead and give online, that's the best way you, to do it. Again, on our website, all of our details are available there. Now, we're looking forward to a, a great ser uh, service. Uh, Phil has got an incredible message for us in our Flourish series. Sit back, enjoy it, and take all in that God's got for you today. Hello Revive Church, it's so good to be with you and join you in our online space today as we journey through the series of Flourish, which has been such an amazing time together as we as a church have come and chatted about topics that we really believe is going to help us flourish as a church and as a humanity this year. And uh, the thing that I really want to focus on today um, is that of fellowship, the importance of coming together and having good godly people in your life that you can journey with that you could go through the ups and downs and the challenges of life and to persevere with. And the truth is we're living in a culture today and the world, quite frankly, is becoming more and more lonely and isolated. Some statistics that um, was quite concerning to find that really paint a, quite a clear picture of the condition of human health at the moment in 2022, and these statistics are from the UK, it says that roughly 50% of adults are struggling with feelings of loneliness and of that 50%, roughly 7% of them are feeling chronically lonely. These are feelings of loneliness all the time, or most of the time. And this has risen from the original number of 6% before COVID, which was such a lonely and isolating time. Now that average has actually gone up. And this is such a peculiar thing to think about in terms of a world that is growing more lonely or feeling more lonely, because the truth is, we're also way more connected than what we've ever been as people. Social media, um, things like Facebook and Instagram and the various social media platforms have provided a space for us to stay connected with people all around the world. But the question is, what is the level of that connection? Is it the connection that we truly need as people, the, the desire and the need to know and to be known? 
or is it more surface level? Some numbers around social media as well, that roughly 5 billion people worldwide are making use of social media at the moment. And of that 5 billion, uh, people are accessing up to seven different social media platforms. Now that is, a, that is a wild number. Some of you probably didn't even know that there were different seven social media platforms that one can access. Um, and what picture this paints is really that we've got a lot of people that are accessing social media. We've got a lot of people that are having some level of connection, but we've also, we've got a number um, of loneliness, a percentage that continues to rise and increase in the world. And for us as the church and as believers, um, the idea of community and fellowship is not actually a new one. Um, knowing that we are better together and we do uh, better and we go further when surrounded by the right people is not purely a church idea or a Christian idea. It's an idea that all people groups and societies have expressed, but yet there is still this desire from humanity and from people to do things their own way. Uh, just a definition of loneliness for you as we start getting into it. Loneliness is a subjective, unwelcome feeling of lack or loss of companionship. It happens when there is a mismatch between the quantity and quality of social relationships that we have and those that we want. Now this speaks really right into the heart of maybe some of the traps we fall in when it comes to social media um, and, and, and really trying to replace what God has put in place, fellowship and knowing and growing with people all through our lives with that of a surface level connection that we find on social media. You see the, the quantity is there. There's plenty of connection. There's plenty of time and ways to connect with people, but it's really the quality that we're missing out on. Biblical fellowship and why we believe it's key to flourishing this year speaks into a relationship that grows, that you grow with. It's a relationship that's able to know you on your deepest levels, the, the struggles that you face, the things that you have to navigate and, and move through, and having somebody in your life who knows that about you and is willing to have those conversations with you. See, social media can be difficult because what we put out there and what we put online is often what we choose to put online. It's not always the full truth. It's often a highlight or what we would like to put online, and that gives you some level of control, doesn't it, church? But the truth is, when it comes to fellowship and it comes to growth, when it comes to flourishing, it's not really about what we control and we put out there, but it's really understanding that we've got people and we should have people in our lives that know everything about us and are willing to have the tough conversations. Sherry Turkle, uh, author, put it like this, we are lonely but fearful of intimacy. Digital connections and the sociable robot may offer the illusion of companionship without the demands of friendship. Our network life allows us to hide from each other, even though we are tethered to each other. Ever feel tethered to a phone or a laptop? We have this feeling of tethered and being so connected, but there's no intimacy. There's no knowability, being known and knowing somebody else. We'd rather text than talk. And like I said, by limiting our level of fellowship or connection or relationship to something online, it's, it's the illusion of thinking that we're in a place of of committed connection and committed growth and relationship, but we're not getting from that relationship the connection that we need. Biblical fellowship, Revive Church, is easy to explain. It's something that, it's a relationship that we encounter and we move through where someone is concerned with your heart, concerned with your spiritual life, concerned with your future, that on the highs they celebrate and enjoy those highs with you, and on the lows they're there to help you make good decisions or to move through the tough moments. And how I like to think about it is this, being a Christian today is amazing and we love it, but really the mark of a, of a good life is someone who's able to be a believer at the end of life, after 75 or 80 years if you're graced in that way. I don't feel it's possible for us to get to the end of our life loving Jesus in a connected way without people around us that are there with you through each and every season, the good ones, and the bad ones. We believe fellowship is such a key topic in Flourish. And when I think about Flourish, I think about growth. I think about the green. I think about a flourishing garden. I'm sure we all want to grow in 2024. Have we got the right people in our lives who are helping us grow? Because without the right people, without the relationships that call more out of you and that are able to identify the moments where maybe we're falling short or maybe we're not quite hitting the mark, without those relationships, Growing becomes incredibly difficult. The same issues that we might have 
as a 20 year old continue to be issues in our lives as a 40 year old because we didn't give anybody the space to speak into our lives. And the truth is, if I can be vulnerable and personal, even from my space to where I'm at, it's, it's really inside of me that I struggle sometimes. The Bible speaks about the heart being deceitful, also speaks about knowing that inside of us, when left to our own devices and our own thoughts and our own feelings, um, it's really easy to get into a negative place. I don't know if you've ever been there. Sometimes if you stay isolated from the right voices and the right people for two or three days or two weeks even, the types of thoughts and ideas that come into our mind can get quite dark. For me personally, I need good spiritual fathers and mentors and counselors because it's those voices in the right time that have actually shifted the trajectory of my life, of my thinking, of my ministry. And it was really in spaces where I had neglected those conversations, neglected those people, key people, put them in my life that I found that I stagnated in my spiritual walk, in my leadership, in what I was trying to do in my life and in my marriage, when left to my own devices, when left to my own thoughts and my own patterns, things would go dark. Jesus speaks about this in Mark chapter 7, when he was having a conversation with his disciples and the Pharisees, and they were talking about food that defiles the body and makes you spiritually unclean, having arguments, and this makes you unclean, and this defiles you, and Jesus takes some time and flips the whole conversation on its head, and he said, you know what, we need to worry less about what defiles us from the outside and be far more concerned, be far more focused on what defiles us on the inside. The scripture that I'd love to share is Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 22. It says, For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. So what I don't want to do today is make anybody feel bad or guilty. But the truth of scripture is this, that when left to ourselves, we are destined to fall. As humanity, we are, we are broken, we are sinful, and by the grace of God, when we accept Jesus into our heart, the, the free gift of salvation, he makes us a new creation. But then the journey is about staying consistent, growing in our faith, growing in our likeness with Christ. And it's in those moments where we need to be uh, focused and concerned about what's happening in our heart by placing the right people around us who can speak into the motive, who can speak into the thought life who can speak into the pattern and help us understand the trajectory that you're on right now. It's not a healthy one. This isn't the one that's going to lead to loving Jesus when you're 75 or 80. But the right voice at the right time makes an incredible difference, church. Another voice, another, excuse me, verse about the heart is Jeremiah 17 verse 9. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Again, I think we trust ourselves way too much. I think that's why so many people are so prepared to endeavor to take on life in their own capacity, in their own strength. And I understand why. Maybe there's been disappointment in your life. Maybe somebody in a very important position has let you down and you've made a decision in your heart. You know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to do things my way. I'm going to go for it my way. But the truth is when left to ourselves, we are destined to fall. God's plan for your life, his plan for 2024 is for you to have great people who can guide and lead and shepherd and pass to you through the good seasons and the bad seasons. In the book of Hebrews, we find two incredible texts that give us the heart behind fellowship and why God wants it so desperately for us as people and why we should be pursuing it as followers of God. Hebrews 3, verse 12 to 13 says this, see to it, brothers and sisters. It starts with see to it. It's already giving us responsibility, giving us something to do. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. What a powerful scripture. So much happening in the scripture. It starts with a commission, a task, see to it, and then addresses the church. Brothers and sisters, see to this, that no one in your community, no one in your circle, no one in your church and your life group is led astray by the deceitfulness of sin and have their hearts hardened. Now, I don't know about you, but there have been moments in my life where my heart has grown hard. And the reasons why I have been numerous, it could be offense, it could be somebody didn't say something, 
the way I wanted it to say, but the truth is this, the enemy would love to take any opportunity to lead believers to a place of a hard heart. And here's a commission for us as the church, for people who love Jesus and love the people around us, is by saying, you know what, I take on the responsibility of helping the people around me not to fall into this trap of a hardened heart by seeing to it my own way to call out the best in people, to remind people that yes, we live in a broken world with sinful people and things might happen that isn't what you wanted it to go. And it could be challenging and it could be difficult. But to call out the best in people and to call out the perfect plan that God has for our lives and remind them that the best is yet to come. We do not want to live in a place where we accept hard hearts, where we accept living at a space of offense, or living at a space where we're okay with growing disconnected and distant from the church and from the body. Because it's in those moments when we're, when we're separated from the safety of the, of the flock. It's in those moments where we are so susceptible and vulnerable to attack from the enemy. And again, I think it's easier. I'd agree with you. I think it would be easier to kind of do life by yourself. Maybe there's less awkward moments, you know, less people to deal with, less uncomfortable conversations, but you will not grow in that space. We want to pursue conversations that help us grow, that help us to move things forward in our lives. And sometimes, I mean, we know the scripture in the book of Proverbs, iron sharpening iron. What does that indicate? It's a, it's a friction. It's a, it's a coming together. Sparks fly. I think we've all had conversations where the sparks have flown before. But when it comes from a person who loves you, when it comes from a person who really wants the best for your life and can see, the, can see the, the footprints of God in your future and they don't want you to make a decision today that can impact and harm that in the future when the sparks fly there, those aren't the easiest conversations, but you know those are the conversations that lead to growth. Those are the conversations that lead you closer to Jesus in your quiet times. Those are the conversations that help you become a better husband and father. Those are the, those are the conversations that help you step in and become the, the businesswoman that God has called you to be. We've got to be okay with having some awkward, tough conversations. And listen, not everybody is able to have these conversations with you, but there can be two or three trusted advisors and counselors in your life. Maybe it's a life group leader. Maybe it's a spiritual father or mother or mentor who's been around your faith journey. I think my point that I'm trying to convince and, 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 and give across today is that 2024 should not be a year where we do things our own way, our way or the highway. I think that is a recipe to step away and fall short of what God has for us this year. I think this is the year of intentionally seeking out godly fellowship, finding people who are like-minded, finding people who want the very best for you and giving them the space to speak into your life. The other scripture in Hebrews that just wraps it all up when it comes to biblical fellowship is Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25. It says this, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Church, I think it's, it's clear. The day is approaching, the day when Jesus comes back and, and writes the wrongs of sin, writes the wrongs of the brokenness of this world. That day is approaching. And in, and in preparation for that day, this is what is laid out for us. It, it's to spur one another on. It's to help each other step into love and good deeds. And we do that by not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. And I think we've seen that. And uh, we're so grateful that we can meet online and be able to speak and discuss and teach and learn in this way. I think the truth for us is, and you probably don't need another pastor or someone telling you to get to church and to get to life group. These are things that you know in your heart. Really what I do want to say is that what you prioritize in life, that's what will bear fruit. So I won't be surprised if someone who prioritizes meeting with God in His presence, with His people, surrounding himself with people that love him and care about him and are able to have good, tough conversations, I won't be surprised when that person starts to bear the fruit of that relationship with God, someone who God begins to use significantly and we see favor and blessing and significance. I'll be so happy, but I won't be surprised. And the same goes the other way. Maybe you prefer to play golf on a Sunday morning or you have another plan that happens on a night with Life Group. And I've got no problem with that. Maybe if you're a golf fan, I love golf. 
your handicap will come down. You know, that'll be the fruit of that decision. But I, I don't believe that leads to a place of growth in your relationship with God and growth in your faith and spirituality. I think for us today, to have a good look at our lives, have a good look at the goals that we wish to set this year, and then to align our goals with the right spiritual practice. And the practice today is very clear in scripture. God is calling us to community. He's calling us to fellowship. He's calling us to coming together, surrounding ourselves with strong people who know you inside and out. The people on your Instagram, they just don't know you that well. The story that you put up, I mean, I take six or seven different selfies before I post the one who I think looks the best. That's not the real me. You know, that's the me after it's been doctored and filtered. I need people who know me without a filter, people who know the real Phil and is able to see into my life where Phil has become disconnected, where Phil maybe has lost his edge, or maybe it's quite clear that Phil isn't spending time with God. I need people who can come in and speak into that moment, and so do you, church. You need people who are able to do that. And the lie from the enemy that we'll believe is that those types of conversations, those challenging conversations, those conversations that call out more, the enemy will tell you that those are burdensome, He will tell you that those are just there to knock you down or that they're just jealous. But that's not really what scripture teaches. Proverbs 27 verse 5 to 9, it says this. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. What a wild scripture. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Oil and perfume make the heart glad and the sweetness of a friend. The sweetness of a friend comes from earnest counsel. What an amazing scripture that that highlights really the heart of God towards the types of friends and relationships we should be endeavoring to build. Friends who will wound us with the heart of this is going to make you more like Jesus. This is going to help you. And listen, there's good ways to do this. Sometimes you can have a tough conversation and you take it a little bit overboard and that requires wisdom and guidance, and with time, that'll come. But the heart is quite clear. It's do we have people that care enough about our tomorrow to have a tough conversation today? As a flourishing believer, one who wishes to take steps of growth in 2024, can we begin to reflect Revive Church on the state of our relationships, the state of our friendships? Can we begin to reflect on those who are in our lives? Do we have people in our lives Do we have people that know us intimately or is it a secret? I think for some of us, we love the control of of determining what people can see and understand about us. And it gives you a sense of control, but really it's actually a place of you're losing control and you're losing it quickly because there's no one in your life who's able to see exactly the truth of what is happening. So my question today as I begin to close is this. Who are the people in your life, church? Who are the people that you have given room and space to speak to? We speak about life group almost every week, and sometimes it can sound a bit like a banging drum, but we really believe that in the context of community, in the context of meeting together and growing in relationships with like-minded people, that things begin to change, and we start to grow, and we start to develop. Um, An analogy that I love, um, and I've actually used it a few years ago, was that of um, Eliud Kipchoge, Kenyan marathon runner who currently holds uh, the fastest marathon time ever recorded. It was on DSTV. It was incredible to watch the whole journey and the process. And one of the very kind of most interesting parts of it was his use of pace setters. He would have different runners run with him, teams of them, and they would swap out and a new team would come in and they'd run and then they'd swap out and a new team would come in. And these, you know, just weren't regular guys. These were uh, elite athletes, uh, athletes that if you, watch, if you watch the Olympics or you watch any of the athletic, you'd be able to recognize quite a few of them. These were, these were top of the top athletes because Kipchoge realized that if I'm going to achieve this incredibly lofty goal that I've set for myself to run the fastest recorded marathon in history, I'm going to need the right pace setters around me because a pace setter's function uh, is incredibly important. Firstly, the pace setter determines the pace at which you run in order for you to reach your goal. So if you are running too quickly with too much enthusiasm, that could impact how you feel and your energy at a later point. So the pace setter will rein you in. Or towards the back end when you're so close, when you're right there at the goal and your legs start to get heavy 
and you start to get tired, it's the pace setter that sets the pace and says, you know what, if you want to reach this goal, it's difficult now. It's, your legs are burning, things are, things are challenging right now, but, but stay close to me, we're going to get there. Rely on my energy, rely on my passion, rely on my fuel. We're going to make it to this goal if you stay at my pace. Kipchoge needed this at every point of the run. And can I go on to say that I think we need strong pace setters in our life. We need to surround ourselves with people who aren't just the people that we've always done life with and we're just reluctant to change. But we know in our heart of hearts, our goals are different. Their views towards God and faith are different. We cannot think that we will reach the goal that God has placed on your heart for 2024, which might be to flourish in your relationship with him, to flourish in your business and your family, if we have not surrounded ourselves with the pace setters who want the same goals for your life. There are people in your life maybe that are incredible people, and they are pace setters, but there might be some that are slowing you down and are, and are prohibiting you from reaching the goal that God has for you. My point to this analogy is this. Be so intentional with the people that are in your life. I'm not for one second saying that you should ditch all the friends that don't love God and don't love Jesus. What I am saying is be incredibly intentional with the people who speak into your life, with the people who give you counsel and advice. Make sure that they are the elite of the elite. If you want to grow in your relationship with God, surround yourself with people who love Jesus. If you want to grow in your ability to lead your family well or to be a great businessman that honors God and the church, surround yourself with people who do that tenfold. And I promise you this year will be a year of flourishing. You in your own right can have, the, can have the best goals, the most amazing motives and intentions, but without the right things in place, including each week that we're discussing over flourish. If without the right things in place, we labor in vain, church. I think today in the closing thought I'd love to leave with you is take time to think about who you're spending your time with and really take time to think about if you're not in a life group, how you can plug yourself in, how you can plug your spouse in, your family. Finding a group of people that care about you and love you and want the best for you. And listen, it all takes time to build relationships and to give people room. But I can tell you something, there is a very special moment that happens when you have some people, two or three people in your life that can speak into your life, that can encourage you. Because with those conversations also come the conversations of incredible love, incredible care, and I spoke about loneliness in the beginning of this message, those feelings begin to come down because it's not just about you navigating life, making sure things work, making sure you've got everything under control. No, you've got a community. You've got brothers and sisters in Christ who love you and who want the very best for you. So Revive Church, if we want to flourish in 2024, can we be intentional about our connecting ourselves with people who love God, with people who love us, people who are committed to our future, and the most easy way to do that is to connect yourself to a life group. So wherever you are watching online today, be sure to head over, either leave something in our comments section or head over right to our website. You can fill in an online connection card there and you can say, hi, this is my name. This is where I live. I'd love to be connected in a life group. I want a life group. I need a life group. Take that step of faith, that step of intentionality today, wherever you're watching this message from, and we will try our very best to connect you with a perfect group where you can take steps of growth and flourishing in 2024. I hope this message has helped you and encouraged you today. I can't wait to see and experience with you how God does an amazing thing in your life. God bless you. I really hope that you enjoyed that message and that it spoke to you in some way. You know, we all need relationships. We all need people that we can do life together with and do it with the purpose of being formed into the likeness of Jesus. And so the, the healthiest and the best thing that you can do for yourself in this year to flourish is actually find a community centered around Jesus. And so if you want to do that as part of the Revive community, you're welcome. We'd love to have you. And the way that you can find community in Revive Church is to go along to our website and click onto the groups tab and it'll take you to all the communities that we currently have in our church or just reach out to us via email on our website and we will get back to you because we want to connect you to people that you can do life with and grow together. God bless you. I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful week and we'll see you the next service.